Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. In today's discussion, it is going to be the high continuation of high altitude physiology, which is the mountain sickness. Let's see what are the topics we are going to discuss. Today we are going to discuss about acute mountain sickness and chronic mountain sickness. This chronic mountain sickness is also called as Monge's disease. It is named after the scientist who has extensively worked on the chronic mountain sickness. So what is mountain sickness? As and when the person goes on the ascent, there are lots of physiological changes which happens in the body, which we saw in the previous lecture. I would suggest all of you to watch that video and come back to this video. Now, in this, the person is not able to adapt to the higher environment. Like he is developing some symptoms and there are some conditions which is causing this acute mountain sickness and chronic mountain sickness. So coming to the acute mountain sickness, as the name indicates, it is acute. It happens within 24 hours, like 8 to 24 hours of the immediate ascent. And it usually lasts for 4 to 8 days. And some most of the times the symptoms resolves on its own. But some forms are severe, which can need, which requires the treatment also. So first coming to the different presentations in acute uh, mountain sickness. First one is the acute mountain sickness itself. And next thing is, there are two terms called as HASE and HAPE. What is this HASE? It is nothing but high altitude cerebral edema. There is some edema in the brain. We will try to understand the reason also. And high altitude pulmonary edema. Both of these are little serious conditions and they require immediate treatment. So coming to the acute mountain sickness, all these symptoms are a spectrum of the same disease only. Like if it is affecting the cerebral part, then it becomes a cerebral edema, HASE. And if it is affecting the pulmonary part, it becomes HAPE. The most common symptom that is seen with people is headache. This is one of the most common symptoms seen as and when the person is going on an ascent. And the person becomes irritable and he will have breathlessness, nausea, vomiting. All these symptoms will be there. These all symptoms are called as acute mountain sickness. Whenever these symptoms are combined with cerebral edema, that is called as HASE or high altitude cerebral edema. Due to the cerebral edema, the person can present with ataxia and disorientation. Whereas when you come on to the HAPE, it is the acute mountain symptoms will be there plus the pulmonary edema. The reason for this cerebral edema and pulmonary edema is completely different. Let's try to understand what happens. Whenever there is hypoxia, what happens to the systemic circulation? The systemic circulation usually goes in for a vasodilation. So the systemic circulation usually goes in for a vasodilation. Whereas the pulmonary circulation, there is a special phenomena in pulmonary circulation. In pulmonary circulation, it goes for a vasoconstriction. This constriction is actually helpful in normal scenario because we don't want the non-ventilated alveoli to be perfused. So there occurs vasoconstriction and this blood will be diverted to the other parts. But here it will not help because it is a gross hypoxia that is happening. This is termed as hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. This is a very important term, hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. There is severe vasodilatation in the brain region leading on to the capillary fluid leakage causing the cerebral edema and the patient will present with ataxia as well as disorientation. This edema is particularly seen in a region called as corpus callosum. Whereas coming to the pulmonary circulation, what is happening here? Here there is severe vasoconstriction and the vasoconstricted vessels are trying to divert the blood to the other vessels. But here many vessels are vasoconstricted. So only a few vessels are getting perfused, but they are getting perfused at a really high pressure. This high pressure will lead on to a condition called as stress failure of the vessels. Because of this failure of the vessels, the pulmonary system is having edema. The entire reason for this HASE is different from that of HAPE because here vasodilatation is causing the leakage. Here vasoconstriction is causing a stress failure because of high pressure and causing the pulmonary edema. Both these conditions are very very serious. Now coming to the chronic mountain sickness or Monge's disease. This happens in people who stay there for at least many years. It does not happen in a day or two. It happens in people who stay for a longer duration. What happens here is the red cell mass and the hematocrits, that is the axel volume, 
both of it becomes drastically increased. Of course, we might think it is very good, but whenever it goes beyond a certain level, what happens to the viscosity of the blood? The viscosity of the blood is going to increase tremendously, which decreases the tissue blood flow. This leads to a decrease in tissue blood flow. This decreased tissue blood flow will severely affect the person's condition. And as we have seen, there is hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. Due to this, what happens is there is severe pulmonary arterial hypertension. Due to the severe pulmonary arterial hypertension, the right heart has to pump against a increased pressure, which leads down to a right heart failure, further leading on to the congestive cardiac failure. So these are the demerits of mountain sickness or ascent to a higher altitude. Now let's try to understand the treatment basis. The most important management is it is pretty simple. First thing we have to do is to make the person a descent, like descent to a lower altitude. Then there is one beautiful drug which is given that is acetylzolamide, which is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. By inhibiting carbonic anhydrase, this drug helps to conserve the H plus ions conserves the H plus ions thereby helping the respiratory drive. It helps to increase the respiratory drive. And if the pulmonary edema or the cerebral edema is very severe, then we can go along with glucocorticoids or corticosteroids. And it is a form of hypoxic hypoxia and definitely oxygen therapy can be tried. Then finally for the pulmonary arterial hypertension, there is a drug called as nifedipine, which is a calcium channel blocker has proved to be showing some improvement. So these are all the management of the mountain sickness. I hope it's clear. Thank you for listening. In the next video lecture, we'll discuss about the deep sea physiology. Thank you.